Well, it's early in the morning again. It's a Saturday morning and we're off down to the Midlands. We're going to uh, Black uh, Brook, I believe it is, and it's a field child championship so it's a british round of it so we're hosted down there we're going to go and have a look i know nothing about field trials do you nope so hopefully this will be educational for you and for us as well we've got about an hour's drive let's uh, go and hit the road and cue the music Well, we made it here. It's lovely and sunny, so let's go and have a wander around and see what this FT stuff is all about, shall we? Yeah, yeah. Let's go for it. All right, there, guys. Um, we're here at uh, Blackbrook, and we're here for FT uh, day. Um, and I've got Darren Hillier here. And uh, Darren, do you just want to introduce yourself and who you are, what you do? Yeah, I'm Darren Hillier. I'm a field target shooter. I'm club captain at Blackbrook FTC, where we are today. And I'm also chief marshal for today's event. And what is today's event? Today's event is the BFTI Championships. So we class the winner of today's event to be the British champion on the day. So it's uh, it's the open Open raiser, the curtain raiser for our for our season. Uh, it's the first major shoot of the season, and tomorrow's event is the interregional team shoot, where uh, teams from all over the country, representing every region, the Midlands, the Southwest, all compete against each other in 15-man teams. That sounds excellent. That's, that sounds really good. So, um, yeah, roughly how many people do you think we've got actually here today on the event? I think there's somewhere around around the 140 to 150 people marked today, and all from around the UK. Also. They're all from around the UK. This yep. event tends to uh, attract, you know, the, the the top half of the order in terms of mm -hmm. you'll have some of the best shots in in the world here today. Oh, it's, and um, likes of um, air arms. I've seen a lot of air arms boys working around. So a lot of sponsored teams here as well. Yeah, the sponsored teams mainly comes into the Grand Prix series. Who, uh, you know, they're representing manufacturers today. But there's actually no manufacturers team event on this occasion. Oh, I see. And um, is this event open to anyone that wants to do it or do they have to be part yeah. of the championship a club and stuff like that? Yeah, you have to be part of a BFTI registered club and have a BFTI card. So you yep. have to be a registered shooter to shoot. But, um, you know, that that's open to anybody to access the sport. All you need to do is join a field target club and you'll be given a BFTI card. Excellent. Um, now, I'm going to be really stupid here and ask them really stupid questions because I do not know much about uh, FT and I don't know too much about HFT as well. So they are very similar, I believe. So FT field, field trials mm -hmm. and HFT F is hunter field trials. Field target and yeah. hunter field target. Field target, there you go. I yeah. told you I didn't know too much about it. So just very briefly, um, I've had a quick walk around the course today and I've noticed that you've got 20 lanes, two shots at each lane. Yeah. But very briefly, just go through the rules for me. Okay, with field target, we, uh, we're shooting uh, air rifles which are sub 12 foot pounds in power, so they're fully legal in the UK. Um, that's the starting point for the discipline. Uh, we shoot targets which range from 10 to 55 yards, mm -hmm. and uh, you'll have noticed that the kill sizes differ uh, as you go around the course, depending on the length of the target. Yeah, I've noticed it's like a 5 mil or something out at 10, 15, and it goes up to about 40 mil, is it? Okay, and the closer targets, some of them, including including in the discipline lines nowadays, they're 15 millimetres. Oh, okay. okay. What we call standard reducers are 25 millimetres. Yep. And, uh, you know, our standard targets are 40 millimetres. And they go out from 10 to 55 yards. So 55 yards is the maximum distance that we shoot at. Okay, so I've also noticed, I've um, had a walk around, I'm um, really friendly chaps around here, and don't mind me asking too many questions, as long as I'm not actually shooting at the time. Um, but uh, it's two shots, and they've got two minutes to take two shots at two targets. Yeah, absolutely you have two minutes per, per lane and that starts from the minute that you put the scope to your eye so you can sit down get yourself comfortable and then you bring the, the, the uh, scope up to your eye to begin the range finding which is absolutely crucial to what we do and there's a difference there with HFT yeah. who, who don't actually adjust the, the scope to, for, for the range. Uh, yeah, yeah I've noticed that uh, so I spoke to someone about HFT and HFT once your scope is set yeah. you're not allowed to touch it well I've noticed all these boys here are playing around with the yeah. scopes the parallaxing um, um, they're even touching their mill dots as yep. well. So you're allowed to do all of that yes. within two minutes. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, uh, it's crucial to us going out at 55 yards that we were able to identify, you know, the distance to the yard. It makes a big difference when yep. you go past that 45 yards as the pellets start to drop off drastically.
Exactly. So two minutes, two shots yep. um, from when the scope goes to your eye. Yep. What happens, the obvious question, what happens if you run out of two minutes? Okay, if you run out of, out of time before you get to fire your second shot off, I'm afraid the second is, is classed as a miss. Okay, and people going around in pairs, I've noticed, yeah. so it's yeah. a bit of a, a self-regulation, is it? To make yeah, sure we, a bit of trust. We operate what's called a body marshalling system, so you're actually marshalling your body, hence yeah. the name, and, and, and that's what we do. Uh, all of the shooters are conversant with the rules, uh, uh, etc., which are fairly basic, to be honest with yeah. you anyway. And of course, then you've got your marshals and chief marshals to help out if there's any in, in, in discrepancies. So you've got the targets that are out there. I've noticed the targets that you've got out there at the moment are yellow crows out there with the black markers that you reset them by pull wires yeah. on that. Yeah. And um, I'm going to assume that if there's tw uh, 20 stands and there's 20, uh, there's two per stand, it is a total of 40, 40, 40 points on yeah. offer. Yeah, yeah, 40 points on offer. Yeah. Again, another difference between field target and hunter field target is, you know, that they actually get one point for hitting the plate, ah. as such, you see. Ah. So the target doesn't have to fall over. Yep. Uh, but if it does fall over and they've hit the black dot in the center and it drops, then they get two points for that for us. It's a bit more harsh. We either knock the target over and get a point or we... So it's basically, it's basically hit the bullseye, you get nothing. the point. Yeah. If you don't hit the bullseye, you ain't getting anything. Yeah, it's out. a bit cutthroat. Like uh, that, okay, yeah. and I'm going to assume these guys are all running 177 as well for flatter trajectory. Do you yeah. get two guys out there? Not at competition level, no. 2-2, uh, two, two, exactly as you said, because of the trajectory uh, and the ranges that we shoot off, the drop-off on a 2-2 two, two is, is extreme. Yeah. So we try to keep that, that, that power curve, that trajectory as flat as possible. Uh, obviously, we do dial. We're changing the position the crosshairs yep. dependent on the range again different to HFT um, you know and 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 therefore 2-2 two, two, we'd be we'd be really moving up and down that turret oh obviously yeah might be some benefits in the wind though having a heavy caliber yeah yeah and is there any restrictions on pellets that you can use because I like to use nice big heavy pellets in my 177 uh, we use pre there's three types predominantly there's one what we call lights which yeah. is uh, 7.9 grains uh, we've got what the the well, what the medium pellet which is 8.4 yeah. and and uh, some of the guys are using heavier pellets, which are 10.4. Yeah. So, you know, the guns are all set up to different speeds, but they all have to get under the 12 foot pounds. Uh, yeah, I've noticed there that they've also, everybody before they hit the target course, they've all got chronos, the chrono. they're all chrono yeah, yeah, on yeah. that. Yeah. And there's one other question, uh, thing that I've noticed as well, is it's really nice to see that there's actually quite a lot of women shooting as well. Yeah, absolutely. Are they all actually in the same competition? They are indeed. Yeah, so they it's do. everybody against, the, all equal. Today, there is no, there is no ladies class uh, uh, today yep. uh, at world championship level and European level we do have a ladies class and a junior class yep. but at this event today we're all in it together and, and you know you're right to say there is now an increasing uh, amount of ladies uh, coming into the sport which is really good to see and really healthy and the upshot of that is is that you know you don't have to be physically strong to do this sport yep. uh, there are no there are no disadvantages in being perhaps a, a petite lady as compared to you know a six foot three strong guy uh, I've also noticed that some of the stands have sitting, kneeling and standing, so they're compulsory. And the, the stands that actually have nothing there, then I assume you can do pretty much anything you want? Yeah, they're freestyle lanes. I've, I've, actually, here's a question for you. Are you allowed to go prone? Uh, you are allowed to go prone, yes. Another question for you. Am I allowed to bring my ATM ballistic rangefinder and do no. all of that? <laughs> <laughs> so no digital scopes? No, 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 no digital scopes, I'm afraid. No, they are completely banned. They're completely yeah. banned. So there, yeah. is, there is that rule. Right, so I'm having a look behind me, and uh, I've noticed that while we've had a look, a walk around, um, there is some spectacular rifles on display. You know, some of them probably costing more than the average car out there. Mm -hmm. So do you want to just uh, pick this one up and just walk us through really the major differences that you're going to find between let's just say somebody coming down to the range let's make sure we still got us all in shot so somebody that would normally go down the range somebody like me I go down with my FX impact or a Wolverine or a Red Wolf and then I look at this thing and it is completely different um, straight off the bat I can see that we've got massive changes up here on the stock a lot of people are aware of what we call hamsters and then bits of tinsel hanging off just walk me through it all okay yeah uh, well today um, at the moment in time I, I don't have my 
uh, what we call our butt rest fitted to this at the moment in time. I carry yep. it separately. But here there would be a, a butt hook, if you like, which fits over my shoulder when I'm. Yeah, I think we've got quite a few so. pictures of people doing that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, obviously, fully adjustable cheek piece up and down to make sure that I'm getting my eye down the centre of the scope. Yep. And, and as many areas of the gun that you'll find are adjustable for the different disciplines in the sh in, in the shots, uh, and to make the, the you know the rifle become part of me, if you like, as possible. Yep. You can't get that sort of comfort out of a standard off the shelf sort of you know HW100 that's built for for hunting. Yep. This is a field target rifle, dedicated field target rifle, yep. uh, and, and pretty much that's all it's good for. Um, so okay. we're talking uh, usual PCP here. So we have the air cylinder, yep. cocking lever, single shot. I'm guessing for yes, you guys, it is. Yeah, well, uh, we have to use single. You shot. have to. Is that to stop people having live magazines? Yes, it around? is. That's right, exactly yeah. what it's for. Makes sense. Yeah. And what sort of scopes are you, are you guys using? I'm guessing you guys are probably going up to 50 times on these. This particular, <laughs> this, yeah, this, this particular scope is is 80 times. Wow. Uh, yeah. Um, <laughs> however, I don't use it at eight times because you yeah. can imagine the wobbles magnified 80 times at the yeah. same time. Yeah. But but yeah, most of us are using scopes of around about, you know, the 40, 50 mag, that kind of thing. Um, I shoot mine on 40 mag for, for everything that I do, including yep. the range finding. Uh, we've got little devices uh, which, uh, you know, certain temperatures, we can actually move our range finding pointers up and down. Based I've on got, temperature? Based on temperature, oh, yeah. You guys are taking this far too seriously. <laughs> well, <laughs> despite the fact that this scope's silver, if yep. it was a really hot day today, the scope would expand slightly of and course. therefore all of my ranges would change. Wow. So that allows me to change ranges on the plinking range where I'm getting an idea of what I'm doing uh, quite simply without without moving clicks around if you like on there. And I'm guessing the tassels on the end are for wind. Yeah, so we, call, we, we call this here a, a, a windicator. Yep. As you can see, it's blowing around in the wind and that gives us an idea of what's happening when we're sat down as to what's happening with the wind at the, at the muzzle end of the gun. Yep. However, at 55 yards down the range it can be doing something totally different and that just comes down to experience and luck yeah yeah <laughs> ab absolutely so okay so let's just sort of really sum this up a little bit obviously there is a lot of expensive kit out here but we're, we're at what well, the masters of championship here yeah. so we got the big boys playing mm -hmm. and they're really obviously all going for mm -hmm. the glory let's say mm -hmm. but I assume you can do this with just basic kits. Yes, yeah, how do people get involved? Absolutely, there are still there are people here today who are using you know a reasonably basic kit, reasonably off the shelf kit, and will perform very very well with it. Yeah. You know. Um, you, you, it, it just depends on you as an individual what you're, what you're comfortable with. I mean, ultimately, what matters most about the rifle is that it's accurate. That's the thing. We're, we're all seeking for a, for a gun that will put you know, you know groups in the size of your little fingernail at 55 yards. Right. And it, you know, it's not only field target rifles that can do that. There are yep. rifles, HW100s, air arms rifles off the shelf that can do that with a little bit of tuning. So if somebody really wants to get involved with this, sort of like get a hold of. Uh, uh, a shooting place um, club like yourselves at Blackbrook yep. or their local yep. clubs like that and is there websites is there places absolutely. where they can go absolutely so what we'll do is we'll put the websites down below and also in the video descriptions for anyone yep. that's really interested in FT Anybody that wants to start FT, our recommendations are always get yourself along to a field target course. You can find all of the courses around where you live on the BFTA website. Yep. It's easy to find. There's a club locator on there. Go along and speak to the guys there. They're all, you know, they're all experienced. Most of all, they're all friendly. They'll let you have a try of the kit. More often than not, some of these guys have got second-hand equipment ready to sell. Uh, and we would always recommend to anybody that's starting off in the sport, you know, do look at the second-hand market. Some of the modifications will have already been done for you. It's not, you don't necessarily have to go out and buy brand new everything. Uh, but what is more important is that you get a chance to try these rifles and make sure that they're right for you before you buy new or second-hand. Sounds excellent. So um, uh, hopefully that explains a little bit of FT. Um, Certainly I've learned a lot today on this lot and um, like as usual, I'll leave the links down in, in the video descriptions so you guys can go and check it out yourselves. Thank you very much, Darren. You're it's really welcome. been interesting. Cheers. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you.
All right, guys, so I've got Chris McVerry here with me, who's the owner of Blackbrook. Um, so, Chris, um, thanks for inviting us down here. It's no problem, nice sir. to come down here and actually learn all about FT because it's totally new to me. So, um, we'll meet one of the guys later and talk to them about the rules and everything. But do you want to just walk us through, talk us through what you've got down here, the setup? Yeah, I mean, we started here, uh, pre predominantly, we were going to look at it as a shotgun facility. That's what all the planning's based around. And we have a five stand um, practice area for shotgun. We do a lot of training there. Mm -hmm. We've done last month, no, sorry, not last month, two months ago, we did the whole of Birmingham City football team. So it's big enough to cater for a lot of stuff. But we found that there's nowhere that puts the air gunner first. Everywhere the air gun round here was shoved into a little corner that really second rate citizens. So I thought there's an avenue here for a marketplace where if we put them first, make them the primary reason for the site, then everybody else can fit in around that. And so that's how it's developed. Whilst all the planning was around the shotgun, we found that by giving the air gun people what they want. Okay, so um, having a look around behind us, I can see that we've got a range there. So that range goes out to about 100 metres? Yes, yeah, so 100 metres where we've got golf balls out there. It'll go further, but at the moment, it's the limit of what we find the shooters can cope with. Yeah, and um, other ranges you've got around here, you've got FT round here at the moment yeah, as well? Yeah, FT, we've got four FT ranges. Um, so they're you varying degrees of yeah, yeah, difficulty? We've got the, the one behind me is what we'd class as our starter course. It's great for people just wanting to try it, whether you're just yep. coming in into HFT or FT, it's a great course for that. The one the other side of the plinking range gets a little bit tougher, and then we've got the full-blown national competition courses. And over to this the is the one that's being used today uh, by the field trial at the moment. Today. Yes, I mean, uh, it's, it's a brand new course that we've stuck in there, and it's the reason we've done that is mm -hmm. it gives me now 80 targets I can play with, so that if we want to do a 40-shot competition, we can keep that going whilst I'm working on the second course. Excellent, and is that one of the reasons why you were invited to run this event today, was it? Yeah, it's because we've got some good facilities in terms of the car parking, yep. centrally based because we're accessible, easy accessible for everybody, yep. uh, which was the, the, some of the key criteria they were looking for. Excellent. So I think we're going to come down sometime in a couple of months and come down and do a proper review okay. of, the, of the area if you if you're invite us down and we'll uh, have a go and see how well I do on the FT courses. It will be quite interesting actually. It's a quite an eye-opener. Yep. Everybody thinks that it's quite straightforward, so, but it's very difficult. So how do you think the event's gone today? Um, in terms of the targets and the complexity of the course, excellent. It's exactly what I wanted. Everybody's coming off smiling about it. It's been very challenging. Um, at the right level for a national competition. Yeah, it's been a little bit windy, a bit of wind swirling around, which has caused a bit of fun as well. So it, it's probably better to have it like that, isn't it? Yeah, it's it, more interesting. It is because this is the, 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 the national championships. So you want something where it, people aren't going to straight it and it tests the best the country's got to offer. And it's certainly done that today. Excellent. Cheers, Chris. And um, we'll come down again in a couple of months' time Great. and um, come and see how it's getting on. Thanks very much. Cheers, mate. <laughs>